All right, West Springfield geometry students. Uh, today we are going to be talking about topic 16. And there are two different parts of topic 16, or two separate theorems upon which we are going to be focusing as part of our discussion for topic 16. The first will be covered in this segment, 16a, which is called the side splitter theorem. Okay, now basically what we have, if you look at the diagram here, is we've got a couple of sides right here, these two segments that have been split into smaller segments by a couple of parallel lines. You can see that these are parallel based on the arrows that we've got right here. And that's an important thing for us to keep in mind. Remember that in order for the side splitter theorem to work as it, as it will in either of these first two examples that we're going to talk about, the lines that you have that are splitting your sides have to be parallel. If they are not parallel, does not work. Okay. If they are parallel, however, we can see that these pairs of sides are going to be proportionally related to one another. And I can, I can set up a proportion that will define that relationship by setting A divided by B equal to C divided by D. Okay. Now, if I look at the example that they've given me over here, I notice that in most of my slots, at least where I've got A, B, and C, I've got a number, but I don't have a number where I have D. What I want you to understand, or what I want you to notice, however, is that they have given us enough information to figure out what D would be. They've told us that this segment right here is four, and that this length right here, this entire length from this line to this line, is 10. So if this is 4 and this whole thing is 10, 10 minus 4 will give us the leftover measurement right here which is 6. Now once we've got that we have everything we need to set up our proportion and solve for x. So the way that I would set this up here is I would say this would be a, this would be b, this would be c, this would be d. So we're going to say 2x minus 10 over 9 is equal to 4 over 6. Now remember, to solve any proportion, we need to cross multiply. Okay, You don't have to write these little arrows if you don't want to. It's just something I do to help myself remember that that's what I'm doing. When I cross multiply, I'm going to say 6 times 2x minus 10 is equal to 4 times 9. And when I distribute what I have here and simplify what I have on the other side, I'm going to get 12x minus 60 equals 36. I'm running out of room down here, so I'm going to rewrite that up top and continue the problem up here. So I've got 12x minus 60 equals 36. I'm going to add 60 to both sides. I'm going to bring my 12x down. These two right here will cancel each other out and I will be left with 12x equals 96. To solve for x, I just divide both sides of this by 12 and my answer, I get x equals 8. Okay, so that's one way that we could solve a problem using the side splitter theorem. If you look at the second example that we've got here, we can do it another way as well. If you notice, the only difference between these sides, or these two sides of my triangle here and here, and these two up here, is that these two come to a point a bit more abruptly. You know, these two will eventually meet some pi, but we can't see that here. But we do still have two sides that are being split by a couple of parallel lines. And so we can apply the side splitter theorem here as well. Our proportion is not going to change. A over B equals C over D. Okay? And if I look over here, I've got a similar situation to what I had last time. I've got A, I've got B. I don't have anything for C, but I do have D. And they have given me enough information here by telling me this whole side length so that I have enough information to figure out what my C would be. So if this whole side right here is 28 and this little part of it right here is 8, then 28 minus 8 would leave us with 20, which would be the length of this side right here.
All right, and now I do have enough information to set up my proportion. So I'm gonna say 3x minus five over 10 is equal to 20 divided by eight. I'm going to cross multiply here. And I get eight times 3x minus five equals 20 times 10. And when I distribute and simplify, I get 24x minus 40 equals 200. Here again, running out of room, so I'm gonna bring this up here. 24x minus 40 equals 200. And then I wanna solve for x. So I'm gonna add 40 to both sides here. 24x will come down. These guys cancel, I get 24x equals 240. Divide both sides of that by 24, and I find solving for x that x is equal to 10. All right, these are two examples right here of ways that we can use the side splitter theorem to figure out missing side lengths or how sides are related to one another. Now there's one more way that we're gonna talk about, at least as part of this part of our notes. And this particular instance that we're gonna discuss next is what we do or involves what we do when we have something written on every part of our triangle. If you notice, we've got an E and an F here, and we didn't have that in the previous two examples. We just had A, B, C, and D. So when we have E and F here, what it's gonna cause us to do is it's gonna cause us to set up our proportion a little bit differently because now we're basically looking at this small triangle right here. and this bigger outer triangle right here. Okay, now in order to keep these straight, I've done a little bit of color coding here at the bottom. But so this is going to be my small triangle, my yellow is going to be my small triangle, my pink will represent my big triangle. So, for the first part of this proportion that I will have for my small triangle, I've got A over A plus B is this segment right here, A plus B is this entire segment right here. So those are the two segments that we have to have that will be proportionally related here. And since we're gonna be big triangle on the bottom the entire time, I'll put my pink down here, and I'll put my yellow up top here, okay? Now the next part of our proportion is just gonna be E and F, okay? We're comparing these two sides right here, this side and this side. Those should be proportionally related. And then finally, I'm gonna have C over C plus D, okay? So in principle, here we're doing the same thing. The only difference is that we're setting up our proportions a bit differently than we would have before. So, if I were going to set up a proportion, or I could even do an extended proportion here if I wanted to, what I would end up with is five over 10, right? A divided by A plus B, five over 10 equals my E and my F would be X plus four over three X plus one. And my C and my D would be X plus five over three X plus three. All right. Now the first thing I wanna do is I wanna solve for X. And I'm gonna use this, these two fractions or this proportion right here to figure out what 
x is equal to. Move this up just a little bit so it's easier for you to see. So here I'm going to get 5 times 3x plus 1. And I'm going to set that equal to 10 times x plus 4. When I distribute in both of these places, I get 15x plus 5 is equal to 10x plus 40. I'll subtract 10x from both sides. These guys come down. These two will cancel, and I get 5x plus 5 equals 40. Subtract 5 from both sides. 5x comes down. We're going to move this up here. And I get 5x equals 35. And finally, if I divide both of those sides by 5, I get x equals 7. Now, if I have done this correctly, then this ratio that I've got over here, my x plus 5 over 3x plus 3, should also equal 5 over 10 or 1 half if I were going to give this as a scale factor in its simplest form. Okay, so let's plug x in over here and just see what we get. So we've got x plus 5 over 3x plus 3. My x, remember, we said was 7. And we want to see if this is going to equal 1 half. 7 plus 5 gives me 12. 3 times 7 is 21 plus 3 is 24. And that simplifies to 1 half. Sorry, which is the same thing as 5 over 10. So as we can see, we've gotten this part of it correct. So there are three different ways, three different examples that we've looked at here for using the side splitter theorem. And again, one thing I want to focus on, one thing that I see students get miscon misconceived a lot of time or make mistakes on, when you have letters or values here on your triangles, your proportions are set up a little bit differently, okay? Up here, if we don't have letters or values on this part of the triangle, it's just A divided by B equals C divided by D. Down here, it's a little bit different if we've got something on every part of the triangle, okay? So hopefully that gives you a little bit more insight on topic 16, or at least on part A. And if you watch our next video, we'll be talking a little bit about topic B. Thank you very much.